On this episode, we're visiting neighborhood landmarks, the Woolly Pub, and a restaurant whose name literally means let's eat. No Chibwe. My name is Lynn Broughton. I take visitors from all over the world on culinary walking tours of Guelph. It might not be a foodie hotspot, but it should be. Our chefs are creative, our food is local, and the flavors are out of this world. It's worth taking a taste detour. How can you describe what Chef Jeff Clarkson does at Mijida? Make delicious food? Sure. Create modern interpretations of classic dishes? Check. But that's not what makes this place special. Mijida attempts to answer the question, what is Canadian food? It does all that while interpreting recipes and methods of cooking from Canadian settlers and, of course, our First Nations influences. Hi, Jeff. Hello. Thanks for welcoming us to the back of the house at Welcome. Mijida. And you're going to make me a couple of dishes today that I get to share with the court. Yep. So I'm going to cook a salmon and a scotch egg for you guys. Beautiful. I've heard the scotch eggs are amazing. I'm sure you've had a couple. I might have had a couple <laughs> or two. Is it elk wrapped scotch egg you're making? Yeah. So we use ground elk um, and then we wrap the egg that we soft boil for six minutes, yeah. uh, peel it, and then wrap the elk around it, bread it with flour, egg, and panko. Right. And it gets deep fried for four minutes. So it cooks the elk, but doesn't continue to cook the egg. So you do the eggs from scratch? Uh, so we have them all ready to Oh, you have them already. Go gotcha. Bread it. It's uh, very soft boil so that when they go in for the extra four minutes, it doesn't overcook them. Yep. Gotcha. So this just goes down in our deep fryer. Great. And basically you just wait. Watch the clock. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of big thing that drew me to this place was the idea of you know, using the sustainable local ingredients, which I really wanted to get into at Absolutely. the time, and basically just trying to improve on that is, it kind of it grows. Yeah. Uh, this year we did a whole lot of like pickling and preserving, um, yeah. so we've been able to utilize those Ontario ingredients, which were right. in season at one time, but we're mm. still able to use them in the middle of winter. Throughout the winter, right, that's so beautiful. So there's jars I see of everything on earth pretty much yep. uh, pickled out in the restaurant, you're actually using those in your dishes. Absolutely. Amazing. Uh, so this is here, final, I guess final product once it comes out of the deep fryer. Right. We just season it with a little salt and pepper. You're going for the soft, the soft center. Does that ever go over sometimes? You just have to trust the time. Oh, lovely. That's <laughs> nice. Um, so the greens here, Yeah. Uh, right now is getting to be very exciting time of year. Uh, yeah. We over the weekend we got our first round of greens in from Zocalo. Zocalo is a great local uh, organic farm. Yep. Yep. And as you were, asking I was sort of hinting at these earlier, things that I have had before. Is the pickled cranberries? Pickled cranberries. I had never known about pickled cranberries until I had them with this dish. And <laughs> You've sold me now. And yeah. then the moment of truth. The moment of truth with the egg. We hope we have our time right. Which beautiful. There it is. That's perfect. So the next one is our sockeye salmon, which beautiful. is on our dinner menu. Yeah. Uh, still available for lunch if somebody wants it, but yeah. um, this one is one of our popular ones for, for dinner, especially when it's on our date night menu. Oh, the date night menu. Nice. Uh, we keep our skin on the salmon as well. Uh, which is edible. Uh, I do like a nice crispy skin yes. on, on the salmon. So, um, and so that's for, a preference of yours uh, to, to cook that way, yeah. Yes and no, and it's also uh, it's it's a way to use the whole fish as well that's instead right. of just you know taking the skin off and throwing it in the garbage when it's perfectly edible. Uh, for salmon, we just use kosher salt. Right. Kosher salt's coarser. Why is uh, that better? A little bit of coarser, yeah. It's uh, it's not iodized as well. Okay. So it doesn't add that uh, little bit of extra flavor. Right. So you want the hot pan, you want to get that sizzle. So we get sear it skin and side sear. down. Uh, while our salmon is searing, uh, we'll get our the rest of the plate ready to go. Okay. Um, 
which is wild rice, spinach. And Are you with... cooking the spinach too? I, the wild yeah. rice is sort of... The spinach will be wilted in okay. with the rest of the dish. Yeah. So the oil that you've been using, is that olive oil? No, nope, we do not use olive oil at all in, right. in our kitchen because uh, uh, same with citrus. Uh, those two things we'll, we have never had in our kitchen right. for any purpose. And why is that? Uh, because they do not grow in Canada. And so staying true to the, the notion of Canadian cuisine and uh, using ingredients that are only to be found in Canada. Absolutely. That's amazing. How do you know when the, like, if I were making this at home, how will I know when a salmon is cooked? Um, well, yeah. a couple different ways. Um, one is by feel. Um, the other is... By feel meaning pressing on it? Yeah, so once these yeah. feel start to get nice and firm, yes. uh, it's a pretty good indication that it's cooked. Right. Also, um, the salmon will start leaching uh, fats out of it. So ah, okay. once the uh, fats are coming out the other side, on the sides, that's another good indication. That right. Okay, good, because well. I always make mine so dry. And <laughs> so these are good hints to know. <laughs> what was that sauce that you put on the plate? Uh, it's a pesto vinaigrette. Nice. Again, made in-house. Everything is made in-house, yes, I assume? Everything, yeah. The, uh, there's only probably about two items. Right. That we do not make right. in this building. And what would those two be? Uh, gluten-free pizza dough and gluten-free buns. Great. So skin side up, why is that? Again? Uh, presentation. Yeah. Uh, because that's why we sear it skin side down to get that nice sear that on look, it. look, right. So to present it that way. To finish, we just use our watermelon radish. With it's a, a beautiful bit, looking um, dish, Chef. Micro look. mustard greens. Micro mustard greens. Um, gorgeous. That's just a gorgeous dish. Jeff touched on some of the principles that Majida adheres to. They keep it local and they keep it sustainable. While many people come here just for the food, I love the fact that the neighborhood group of restaurants view sustainability and being a good corporate citizen as being just as important. Look at this beautiful looking thing. I love your colors that you guys choose. I guess you can't take too much credit, but... No, I can. <laughs> no, I'm just Good for day. you. Mmm, <laughs> that's delicious. Tell me about the name. We were trying to establish a restaurant that would take you on a kind of a culinary tour across Canada. Right. Talking with a friend of ours, he told us about a word named Mijida. Right. Or Mijida. Mijida. And which means let's eat. Perfect. And we thought, wow, we couldn't find it's a simple. better word yeah. to describe a restaurant. So very much like a bon appetit. Exactly. That's right. Cooking is always evolving, right? That's and I think right. you always have to look back to the past and look at true techniques and, and yeah. styles. And then, you know, elevating those dishes through seasonal ingredients. Yes. And really showcasing the people who are growing food around us. Yeah, for the most really part. focusing on the partners that, that you That's that right. work with. Absolutely. And people who are doing the right thing in the industry. Right. It's incredible the amount of stories that are out there, what people are going through, the struggles they face. Yeah. And so, you know, it's our job to tell the story so people get this, not just our staff about the respect, but then obviously the guests coming in here. And the mm -hmm. guests have to really understand, uh, you know, the importance of the food that's on the plate. It's fantastic to, to offer uh, guests that much more in-depth information, yeah. the story. And to know that they come in, that they're not always going to see the same menu items. That's right. Or some of the same ingredients on the plates. That's right. We don't do things the easy way, uh, but we do things the right way. Right. And so they make butter. They don't they, just make the leaf butter, they, they, butter, they churn some of their own butter. Wild. And they just use it through preserving techniques as well too. So what we do mm -hmm. with all of our vegetable peels, right. so we dehydrate them in the oven overnight. Right. And we started rolling vegetables, we create an ash, right. and we started rolling our vegetables in it, carrots and potatoes. Right. And so sometimes people will see, I have all these black specks on my, on on my, my carrots, carrots and my potatoes. My <laughs> and but it adds this great earthy flavor. Oh, so it. there's That's a depth, an extra a, depth it, of flavor. It is, it's, it's stunning. You know, I'm eating a scotch egg, which is, you know, delicious and one of our, our staples here that will also stay on the menu. And, yeah. and so you're looking, if, if, you know, I was coming from Scotland and I'm gonna make a scotch egg, uh, where am I making it with? Yeah, So course. we use elk, mm -hmm. right? So it's a, 
and the pickled cranberries, and, and it's, it's kind of elevating it, kind of taking a, an idea and going, what would you, you know, imagine if you're, you know, landing in in Canada yeah. and what was available to you at that time. Right. So it's, it's a lot of fun. So like some of the dishes uh, just have a little bit of history to them. Yeah. Uh, and Absolutely. we've just taken our own little spin on it. Uh, gather, we're going to go head off and have a pint somewhere next. I think that's a great idea. Do you think? And, uh, and I've got a great place for us to go. have a great place. Excellent. I look Something forward to it. Something where it all started. Just around the corner is the Woolly Pub. It's a landmark destination, and I'd be lying if I said it was my first time here. What Mijida is doing for food, the Woolly did for craft brewing. They've been focused on it for 29 years, long before much bigger cities caught on to how good a well-made local beer can be. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. So what am I having here, Court? You're drinking a McLean's Pale Ale. Lovely. And what's yeah. so special about the McLean's Pale it's Ale? It's our cask-conditioned beers mm -hmm. that we serve here at the Woolly. Yes. So, uh, otherwise known as a real ale. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. And uh, I've got the Wellington County Ale. Fantastic. We should toast before you tell we me more. We should, yes. Cheers. Cheers. Lovely to be at the Woolly. Well, thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. What is it that we say? Meet you at the Woolly? Meet you at the Woolly. That's, that's, our, that's our ongoing tagline. I love these beers because it's lower in carbonation. Yes. And um, and it's a really silky Absolutely. mouthfeel to it. And it's dissipating. We can see yeah. the head on them are it's and, dissipating. Uh, it's quickly. a lot of flavor and yeah. so so live active uh, live active beer. So Beautiful. The, the, actually the flavors do change the, the the more it warms up. Yeah. And even after we once we've tapped it and some air gets exposed to it, mm -hmm. the profiles change. It's almost like red wine. Oh, when you open up wine and let it breathe a little bit. Uh, the complexities uh, right. change, and you start to pick up different flavors and characteristics of the beer. Right, so. and so uh, how long is the life of this newly tapped cask? We love to have them finish off in about four days. Right. Uh, they can last up to a week, um, but we're always testing and, and tasting sure. them to make sure that they're at their, right. at Checking. their peak. Can you start at the beginning and sort sure. of tell me the beginnings, which have a lot to do with your dad? And Yeah. Old Bobby D. Bobby D. Uh, 1990, he had all craft beers and served local foods, and it really grew. He had a few pubs across Ontario, and uh, and it was really a 1990s, huge. 1990s, did you say? Sorry? 1990. 1990, and I, I imagine then, in 1990, he would be pushing the notion of craft beer. This seems like a little ahead of its time, yes? Yeah, there was there was really nobody. Right. There weren't there were only a handful of people doing it in Canada. Amazing. And so, right. uh, so he was a. You know, it really paved the way for a lot of small yeah. breweries to to get a foothold in the market. Yeah. And you look at where we're at now. Well, you it's know, back crazy. then we had yeah. just a handful, five or six That's right. uh, microbreweries. That's right. And now there's close to 300. To yeah. me, the pub embodies a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's where where professors and students get together. Right. You know, it's where teams come to 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 kick back and relax after a game of hockey. Mm -hmm. And it's where families come on the weekend. The crazy part about the pub has been voted the best number one family restaurant in Guelph for That's like fantastic. three and years running, and it's a pub. Yeah. And you come here on a Saturday and Sunday, even a Friday night, it's full of families. Right. And that's that's what's defined this place. It's 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 the people. Yeah. It's not us. So Court, thank you so much for spending the day with me and showing me Majida, showing me the woolly, telling me the stories. I loved being here. I loved being with you today. Cheers. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's great. Cheers. What connects the Woolly and Mijida isn't just the owners. They really encapsulate what makes Guelph's culinary scene special. They're respecting tradition while reinventing it. They're working with local producers and creating something that you can't easily find elsewhere. It's local, it's a nod to our regionality, and worth the taste detour.